Hey everybody, we are getting dangerously close to having some frosty mornings out here and the garden is definitely starting to fade. But I've still got a lot of nice red peppers left that I want to get cleared out before it's too late. So how about one more sauce? I'm gonna make a delicious and red hot harissa paste that all you heat seekers are gonna love. So let's get started. Not a bad haul for the dregs of summer. And I even managed to get a couple of these Carolina Reapers. And I am deathly afraid of eating these, but I did grow them, so I'm obliged to try them. <laughs> now this is gonna give us a lot of great pepper flavor and a lot of heat, but I wanna bulk this up so it's not quite so hot, and also just because I want more harissa, so I'm gonna be adding in some red bell peppers. It's gonna be a bright red sauce, and these are gonna give me plenty of pepper flavor, no heat and a lot more sauce. Now, apart from the peppers, I'm gonna be adding in about a head of garlic and the juice from a couple of lemons. And if you go looking, you're gonna find a lot of variations on this recipe, but one thing they all have in common is a very specific spice blend, which is coriander, some cumin, and some caraway seed, and this is what gives rye bread its flavor, and it gives this paste a very unique flavor. And I have equal parts of all three. Now, most of the recipes include some smoked paprika, and I do have smoked paprika, but for my recipe today, I'm gonna put in a couple of chipotle peppers, and these have a nice smokiness to them and a great chili flavor as well. Some recipes have a little bit of tomato paste in them, and I'm gonna do some both ways today. And finally, some good olive oil. Now the first thing I want to do is to cook all my peppers so they get nice and tender, and my paste isn't all gritty. So for the bell peppers, I'm gonna put them on a nice hot grill, and I'll grill those for three to five minutes on each side until they get a nice char all over them. And then I'll put them into a bowl with a cover on top and it'll get all nice and steamy in there and that'll kind of loosen up the skins and they'll peel right off of there. And for the rest of these, I'm gonna cut off the stems, knock out most of the seeds, and then I'll roast them with the garlic in the oven. And these have really light skins on them, so I don't need to worry about peeling these. They're gonna be nice and tender. There aren't really a ton of seeds in these Fresno peppers. You don't really have to worry about them, but I'm using so many of them that I'll knock out most of the seeds. garlic, I'll just break down into individual cloves. Now I'll hit all that with a little bit of that olive oil. Toss it a little bit. this in a 400 degree oven for around 15 minutes until everything gets nice and hot. While those peppers are roasting, I'm gonna go ahead and toast these spices and that is gonna really activate the oils in here and bring out a lot of great flavor. So I'm using equal parts of each and I have about a tablespoon today and I may or may not use all of the spice. 
it's another one of those taste as you go adventures. So, right into a cold pan and then I'll bring this up to around medium low heat. Now as this is coming up to temp, I'll just keep it moving, swirl it around here and there, toss it a little bit. And I just want to get these lightly toasted. It'll start to get really, really fragrant. And about that point, you're done. You don't want to get these really dark brown and you don't want to get it all smoky because by that time, it's gonna be kind of bitter. Yeah, now there's a real nice aroma coming off of there. Now as soon as I feel like these are ready, I want to get them out of the hot pan and either into a bowl or onto a plate, start cooling. That way they don't continue to cook in the hot pan here. Now I want to get my spices all ground up and you could use a hammer or a mortar and pestle, but I just use this old coffee grinder that I've designated as my spice grinder. Oh yeah, those shriveled up to just about nothing. But now, these peels should just fly right off of there. No problem at all. And I am not going to be too picky if a little bit of that doesn't want to come off. That's not going to hurt anything. Still a bit hot though. Mmm, <laughs> that smells incredible. So I roasted those for 15 minutes and then I did put them under the broiler for about three minutes just to get a little bit of color on the top. And I'll let this cool down for a little while and then we'll begin to assemble this paste. And now for the fun part. Let's put it all together. Get my, all my peppers down in there. The garlics, I can just squeeze right out of their skins now. And they should be nice and sweet after roasting. Let's go with nice big fat chipotle. I'll start with one and we'll taste it and see how it comes out. Now we'll hit that with our lemons. I'll start with the two lemons. We'll go from there. Our spice blend. Let me go. I don't know. That's about a tablespoon to start with. Nice big pinch of salt. And let me get about a half cup of that olive oil. Again, there's no real measurements here. You don't even have to use olive oil. Just put in more lemon juice, maybe a little water. <laughs> It's your Harissa. Do what you like. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. oh, that's good. Really good. I think I'm gonna go with about another half of a lemon. Now what the heck? 
These are small lemons. I'll go with the whole thing. Just a little bit more salt. Oh yeah, that's outstanding and pretty darn spicy. Now what I want to do is take some of this out of here for Marcy. <laughs> She can't have any tomato, and God knows she can't have any Carolina Reaper. <laughs> so now I've set Marcy sauce aside, and I'll throw in about two tablespoons of tomato paste. things up added some good sweetness there I like that so now what I'm gonna do is take some more of this out here before I completely annihilate it with the Carolina Reaper <laughs> and finally it's time to go nuclear I'm just gonna pop this whole thing in there Lord help me Here goes nothing. Check out that bite. Wow. Oh, wow. No, oh, there is nothing like the flavor of those Carolina Reapers. Man, they taste so good, but sweet. Baby Jay, that is hot. I'm going to be sweating that out for a while, but I do like it. <laughs> so now, while this already does taste great, I want to give it a little time for all those flavors to mingle and get to know each other and really create a good, strong bond and become one. So I'll put this in the refrigerator overnight and we'll give it an honest taste test tomorrow. we did and I'm going with the Reaper variety because I live out there on the fringe when it comes to the hot stuff. Check out that bite. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Does have a punch to it. Ooh. Mm. I just started making harissa a few years ago, and it immediately became one of my favorite condiments. It tastes good on just about any savory dish I can think of. I love a big scoop of this on almost all of my grilled meats. I stir it into steamed or fried rice to kick those in the pants. And apart from being a great condiment, it's also a fantastic ingredient to add to your dishes. I like to fry some in a little oil and add some diced vegetables and stock, and that makes a great base for soups or meat braises. It's really wonderful stuff, and when you make your own, you can dial the heat up or down to suit your taste. So, whether you're a fire eater or a pepper pushover, give this one a try, and I know you're gonna love it. Thanks for watching. Um.